Busque su Biblia en el libro de Lucas capítulo 18. And open up your Bibles in the book of Luke chapter 18. El versículo 34 en adelante dice algo muy importante. And from verse 34 on it said something very important. 35, vamos a leer, dice, aconteció que acercándose Jesús a Jericó, un ciego estaba sentado junto al camino mendigando. As, a, as Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. Un ciego, escucha bien esto. And listen to this carefully, a blind man. Dice, al oír a la multitud When he heard que the crowd, pasaba, preguntó ¿Qué era aquello? He asked what was happening. Y le dijeron que pasaba Jesús el Nazareno. And they told him Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Entonces él dio voces. So he called out. Diciendo Jesús, hijo de David. Well, saying, Jesus, son of David. De mí. Have mercy on me. Tremendo. Y los que iban delante le reprendían para que se callase pero él clamaba mucho más diciendo hijo de David hijo de David ten misericordia de mí and those who led the way rebuked him and called him to be quiet but he shouted all the more son of David have mercy on me cuando usted tiene una necesidad usted tiene que gritar when you have a need you must shout como le dijo Dios a Jeremías clama a mí yo te responderé just like God told Jeremiah call out to me and I will Respond. Grite, no importa que alguien te diga, cállate. Shout. The, doesn't matter if anyone tells you to be quiet. Muy importante que usted busque la presencia de Dios. It is very important for you to search after God's presence. David era un hombre que tenía hambre de Dios. David was a man that was hunger, hungry de la for the presence de Dios. of God. <laughs> no hambre de un culto. He was not hungry for just the service. Como le llamamos. The way that we call it. Tenía hambre del Dios vivo. He was hungry for the living God. Nosotros estamos adorando aquí un Dios vivo. We are worshiping here a living God. Usted no viene a verme a mí ni al predicador ni al que va a cantar. You don't come here to see me or the preacher who's the one who's going to sing. Usted viene a la presencia de Dios. Get used to coming si to the presence of God. And if you have a need, grite, shout it out. Señor, te necesito. Say, Lord, I need you. I, I am hungry. I surrender my heart. I am confused. I am in anguish. Sadness has reached me. I am depressed. I have no strength. No se sienta raro, hay gente que no pasa al frente o no claman porque ay, la gente se va a enterar. And don't feel weird if you don't come to the front because you're afraid of others se finding se out. Se entere, es tu necesidad. Let them find out it is your need. Sí, soy yo el que necesito. Yes, it is I that Te voy a gritar. It. And I'm going to shout it out. Yo voy a clamar. I'm going to call it out. And Apostle Paul has his needs, and he was an apostle. And he says it in 2 Corinthians that he had his thorn. And he would ask God, remove this from me. Something that it was bothering him. No one knows if it was a sickness. A problem with his eyes because he was able to see the living God. Many things that are trying to understand what this thorn was. But what it says is that what came, it was from Satan himself. And for him to say that he would not believe in himself more than what he was. The Lord gave me this thorn to keep me humble. Because we all, we all have the tendency to believe that we're something great. We are the greatest thing. Pablo 
era un hombre que tenía grandes revelaciones. And Paul that was a man that had great revelations. Y le pedía a Dios que me lo quitara. He had a thorn and he would ask God to remove it. La voz del cielo le dijo, bástate mi gracia. And a voice from heaven said, no te voy a quitar nada, bástate mi gracia. No, yo no te he dejado solo por aquí. I have not left you alone. Pasa la prueba. But go through the test. Dice, porque mi poder se perfecciona en tu debilidad. My power is perfected in your weakness. Quiere ver mi gloria, tiene que bajarte. You want to see my glory, you must humble yourself. Quiere ver mi gloria y la manifestación es You want to see my glory. De mi gloria. And the manifestations, the manifestations. You need to humble yourself. Si no te humillas, te mando un aguijoncito. If you don't humble yourself, I'm going to send you a thorn. Para mantenerte bajito. To keep you low. Qué Dios tan poderoso, ¿ah? ¿eh? What a powerful God. Mi poder se perfecciona en tu debilidad. My power perfects in your weakness. Y Pablo dijo, ahora yo me glorío, es que soy de Paul says, now I'm glorified because I am his. Yo he declarado que soy un debilucho. I have declared that I am a weak man. Lo que yo hago, lo hago porque él está en mí. And what I do, I do it because of him who is in me. Y poco le pasamos en ese examen al Señor. And very few of us we can pass the test. And this is just a pause before we read verse 40 and look 18. This blind man was able to see and recognize that it was the Messiah passing by. The blind man was able to see it. There was two blind men in one occasion that they were also shouting, no son of David, Dios, son of David. And the Pharisees, the Tenían religious ojos, people, no they had eyes but they couldn't see. Los ciegos, a veces, ven más que los que the blind men sometimes see more than those that we can see. Y no vemos su and we cannot see his glory. Y no reconocemos su presencia. And we don't recognize his presence. El Señor está aquí en este día, oíste. The Lord is here in this moment. Él puede sanar, él puede liberar. And he can heal you, he can set you free. Él dijo, a mí me han enviado para libertar los cautivos. He said, I was sent para sacar de la cárcel, to set the captives free. Para sacar de la cárcel, para sacar de la cárcel. To take out of the prisons. Él está aquí, él puede hacer un milagro contigo. He is here and he can do a miracle with you. Yo no sano a nadie, él te puede sanar. I don't save anyone. He is the one that can save you. Así que al final, si tú quieres, grita. So at the end, if you want to shout, shout. Or if you want to come and find your refuge in Him and tell Him, Lord, I need you to heal me. Even if they tell you to be quiet. Because the, also in the church we have those that call you out and say, Say, Amen, ouch, it hurts me. Say something. Cuando Él gritó, mire lo que dice el versículo 40. Jesús entonces Deteniendo, sea conmigo, deteniendo. Say it with me. Jesus stopped. He stopped. El clamor, the shout, este hombre lo detuvo. From this man, it made him stop. El clamor, el Señor. The Lord stopped. Y mira lo importante que dijo la gente. Look what important thing that he said. A verlo a su presencia. He ordered the man to be brought to his presence. No está muy lejos. Tráigamelo aquí. He's so far. Just bring him here. Bring him closer. Because when he gets here in my presence, something is going to happen. Are you listening? It's important to discern the presence. It's important to know that when I am worshiping, I am in His presence. I'm with this religiosity in the church. It's done. It's so the same, same thing. And we are all guilty of doing the same thing and to not respect God's presence. Because the church thinks that this is just a platform. A platform is out there when you are in the house of this. This is an altar. This is where we present sacrifices of offering where we kill our flesh. We have everything upside down. We think that the church is a show. We come to present a service to God. 
Usted no viene al culto, usted viene a you don't come to serve. You come to serve Him. Ay, ay, ay. No viene a los Pentecostales y me matan. If the Pentecostals hear me, they'll kill me. It's important, guys. For this, this is the morning church. When you say the anterior Domingos, all the messages from the past Sundays, the enemies of this this presence. I talk to you about about the enemies of the past. Como Roma se la arregló para hacernos ídolos y muchos de los Rom fixed it up so that he could put all the idols. El apóstol Pablo en Romanos uno lo dice claramente. And the Apostle Paul says it clearly in Romans 1. No darle gloria a Dios, entonces fueron a adorar a criaturas. They were not given glory to God, they went to worship creatures, things like that. Como resultado, entonces Dios los entregó a sus pasiones. And as a result, God gave us into our passions. Donde Roma terminó como estamos en el día de hoy, hombres con hombres, mujeres con mujeres. And Rome finished, and it ended up the way that we are right now. Men with men and women with women. And you can read in Romans 1. And Paul said it very clearly. That's the result of you forgetting about God. Because man is seeking after God. But because it doesn't find it, the way that he does it, he makes one, one that does not punish that it doesn't speak, that it doesn't bueno, see. Si le llevo flores, no me dice nada. Si le prendo la velita o no, él no me dice nada. Fragrant flowers doesn't say anything if I have a candle. But it's so much different than the God from heaven. Because he has commandments. He has a statute. There's an order. And you cannot do as you wish. We have to do as he says. How many of you can give glory to God in this hour? Bring him to my presence. Because something happens when we are in the presence. That's why nothing happens in the church. Because we don't come to the presence, we come to just a show. And many ask, who is going to preach? Who is going to preach? Because if there's someone that they don't like, they don't come. Please close the door. I know that some may want to leave now. If we don't say this, if we don't adjust things according to God, nothing is going to happen. And this city needs a church that has a revival, that has God's presence. If someone likes the show, they can go find it somewhere else. We have to do it, including myself. I don't want to continue to do this for 30 more years. The same thing over and over. You can lift up your hand and say, like, Lord, break it. break it so that your will will be done, not mine. This is hard. When he came near, Jesus asked them, What do you want me to do for you? In the presence of God, many things happen. Many people come and say, What an atmosphere. The presence is not an atmosphere. And an atmosphere, it's a platform, it's a scenery of excellence. The lyrics on the screen, the lights, and I can tell you this because yes, I went to the field where I found two elder men. Playing just instruments, and it was him and his wife. And when they would worship, they would just see all the dust. And you can just imagine this. A minister from New York City. Right here in the dust. 
But what a blessing that we all received that night. And I thought, no, I'll take it. That church does meetings every night. Every day, seven days of the week. And I dared to bring it to them. They would walk every day to the church. And I'm already tired just going in the in the car. And I would ask, are we there yet? I was like, yeah. So far. And this is just how the, the car ends. Now we have to walk. And I can't repent it. I wanted to insult everyone that was here, but it wasn't you. Because we're so spoiled. They didn't care who they were speaking. They had a commitment with God. They were faithful. Sometimes, we want the atmosphere. And it is good, but it's secondary. It's not what brings down the glory. It's not what touches the Father's heart and produces His presence. It's a pure heart and clean hands. People that walk, walk in righteousness in God's presence. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. Hello. The white road, beautiful, precious. You can do all, all things. No, God's presence, it's more than just a function of excellence. It's more than the fireworks and those shouts without anointing. God told Moses, Mi presencia irá contigo y te daré descanso. My presence will go after you and will give you rest. And Moses said, If your presence doesn't go with us, don't take us anywhere. La importancia de la presencia de Dios. The importance of God's presence. That's why we have many messages from the pulpits, but nothing moves. The word doesn't produce anything. The many teachers, theologians, with PhD translates to permanent head damage. A lot of letters. They're eloquent, but there are no, there is no presence. May the Lord help us so that we may repent from all that we have done. And the church, the one that is going to function now, we need to change. We need to change our routine. We need to remove that mask of hypocrisy that we've been wearing. But behind the mask, you're doing things that Father God knows. How many of you want His presence to go with you? When you answer, they know that there's something. And for them to say, something is happening. But it's not you, it's the presence. It's God's Spirit in our life. That's why it says, do not stand in the Holy Spirit. The times of Elijah and Elisha, that they would shout out, but the Lord lived, for I am in His presence. And they would shout it out. Presencia continua. A continuous presence. Muy importante. 
that it's so important. Because in God's presence, we have protection. I'm going to read to you all the blessings when we are in God's presence. We need to learn how to humble ourselves in His presence. Shut it out, like, have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on me. It's a shout that even the church now has to do. So that the Lord would stop and would say, you are shouting, you're calling out, I'm going to do something with you. And last Sunday I preached to you about Acts this needs to happen so that the refreshment of God will come. Repentance and conversion. What is Acts chapter 3? Repent, therefore. Turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The times of refreshment may come from the Lord. Times of refreshment. And it is wonderful what the Word says so clearly that if we humble ourselves before God, if we declare ourselves needed, if we recognize our sins, and we repent from our heart, then the conversion comes. This morning I was seeing what it was a metamorphosis. How the butterfly goes through all that process. And you know why am I seeing this? Because the Lord is dealing with me. He needs to go through a metamorphosis. And this is the whole process that the butterfly goes. That the caterpillar out of the cocoon comes out knowing what he needs to do as a butterfly. I didn't see the butterfly. I saw God's wisdom. How it does it itself. The butterfly does it itself. So, we all need to be transformed. Don't look at anyone. Say, I need to be transformed. If we want God's presence, if we want His benefits, I read this very important. The presence of God is more than a function of excellence. It's more than the fireworks. It's more than shouts without anointing. Because the believers, they shout a lot. They dance, they jump. They shout. But without anointing and no presence, the presence is more than that. It's more than empty noises. More than emotions and feelings. There are people who have the capacity to shed tears of tears. It's just all hypocrisy. It must be from the heart. Be careful. Hollywood is filled with artists. There's people that have this capacity. They can cry. And you feel, you feel sorry for them. But the Lord said, by its fruits you will know them. It's more than tears. It's more than just tears and feelings. It's more than even joy itself. More than dances. 
more than the musical instruments, that it's all good. But the presence is more than that. You can play the piano excellent. Oh, but are you blessed on the inside? Because it's not the piano, it's the one that interprets. The presence of God is invisible. But it shakes the man from the inside. The presence is the one that enters your body, your soul, and your spirit. You can preach a message. All well done. But if there is no presence or anointing, or just wasting time, just simply listening to the big mouth, and we have so many of them. It touches the, the, the body, the soul, and the spirit. The presence of God is something spiritual. It operates in the inner man. The one that it was born again. The new creation. If you want to change, give your heart. You want to change, you want to be transformed. Give your life to God Almighty. Shout like a blind man said, Have mercy on me. And the Lord will ask you, What do you want me to do for you? Whatever you ask the Lord, whatever your need may be, the Lord may be able to supply. Because the presence of God is active, it's rewarding, it transforms our being. Transforms our being. People will see you. I would say that's not the same person that I knew. You're not the same. Why? Because God transforms you, changes your image. The Lord changes you and transforms you. But the most important thing is that He gives you rest. My presence will go before you and will give you rest. Moses, if you walk with me, if you depend on my presence, you will be living in peace. Even if the devil rises against you, even if the winds, strong winds will come against you, no, no matter who rises up against you, your enemies will come, but they will not flee. Because my presence is more. That's why Paul would say, if God is with us, who can be against us? You can give a hand clap to the Lord. It's the essential thing. Infinite, great, and sovereign God inside and outside of the believer. It's, well, it's great what we do in our home. And we do our homework. We're going to see the glory of God in our life. We're going to see the Success. We're going to see prosperity. We're going to see God working and dealing with our lives because we have accepted and acknowledged His presence. It's the beauty of God upon you that makes you live out where it's supernatural. Peter would walk and his shadow would heal people. It wasn't Peter. It was the one that was inside Peter. That's why he said, I don't have silver or gold, but what I have, and what he had was present. He had the Holy Spirit of God in his life. The grumpy Peter, the one that rejected the Lord, now he is different. His God can transform us because his presence can change us. When you go into prayer, David would say, 
I want your presence. I need your presence. That's where we are transformed and we go from glory to glory. In the presence of the God of God. And it manifests outside the time of man. God is not desperate to move. We are desperate for him to move. God has his time. The presence of God, no one can manipulate. Only a broken heart, the, the Lord will not reject. And if you call on to him, he will come. With our things, we cannot manipulate and activate. He manifests when he wants. He manifests when you invite him. Because he wants to be in you, in your home, in your child. In everything that you do, he wants to be there. Count on him and you will see. It is better with him than without him. The Holy Spirit has no rush. He has a way of doing things. His style of doing things. His. Meaning that if we do it ourselves, we're going to mess it up. This is what we do with pastors and leaders. So we need to learn to get out of this routine. Renounce to our own programs. How hard is it? No, no, no. I can't do that. Worship, collect the offering, listen to the word, and we go home. But things need to change, and they must change. And if the Lord wants to do something different, we need to learn. Did you hear me? But please do not. Throw stones at me yet. It is important to acknowledge and to be aware of God's presence. The Lord moves when you least expect Him. He's everywhere, but His presence gets manifested when we worship the King. And we remove all of our routines and our programs. We change our mind about the platform into an altar. And we renounce all of our idols. And we start placing Him first. When we start revering Him and respecting His presence, we don't come here to talk because I am in His presence. I want to take advantage of being in the Father's house. When we have that in order, and the Lord will move him. And as I told you, New York, more than anything, needs people or remnant that would give him the glory, would recognize them, would align to his kingdom, his commandments, have his constitution, so that this city would see the fire, would see a church that is passionate. The people would come, and the lame would come, and would not leave the scene. How many of you want to see this? That is why God is speaking to us. We need to change our mind. Our mind needs to be renewed, and He wants to do it. So let us honor the Lord, because His presence is wonderful. He has given us the Holy Spirit by His grace to give us the same triumph that God, that Jesus had in the redemption. A church that is revived, says in Colossians chapter 13, that if you and I truthfully had been resurrected in Christ, we need to seek the things above. So look up. We're going to see an exercise. Focus. Put your eyes on the things above. Because of the things down here, He'll take care of them. Do not be anxious about anything, says the Word. But it says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and everything else shall be added. Everything else 
That's presence. That's why he calls his disciples. He tells his disciples. To the one that he was shouting. The shouter. To him calling out, son of David, son of David. He's recognizing him as the Messiah. All others around him would not recognize him. But when he calls out, son of David, he was saying, he's the Messiah. He's calling him by name. Son of David. Have mercy on me. And the Lord said, Bring him to my presence. And when he came into his presence, he asked him, What do you want? 